Hello and welcome to a new video about networks. We're talking about the Internet Protocol now. What is the Internet Protocol? IP it is also called. Well, to answer this, we have to, little, to look a little bit into the history. Yeah? Because honestly, if I just tell you what the Internet Protocol is, you wonder why this works, how it works. <laughs> but if we have a look into the history, it's okay. Okay. Yeah? Because actually, the Internet Protocol is not very reliable. We will see that. Huh? So the Internet Protocol previously uh, was designed as a thing uh, which was called a uh, Transmission Control Program. Yeah? Originally, Transmission Control program. It's also DCP, the abbreviation of this transmission control program. It was a thing which was designed to get a data stream from here to there. And then this was a monolithic protocol, and then it got modules. All right. Then it got separated into different modules. One of these modules yeah, separated modules. One of these modules is the Internet Protocol. For IP. This is layer 3 in the OSI model, okay? And another part of it was the transmission control protocol. TCP, this is layer 4 in OSI, the OSI model. Yeah. So this was separated, the abbreviation TCP state, yeah? and this is why it was called the TC, TCP slash IP stack. TCP over IP, yeah? separated to modules. And why I said this? <sighs> that this is not reliable, I will just explain, yeah. All those those protocols they were available in several versions until one version finally reached worldwide usage, yeah. And this was the Internet Protocol version four reached worldwide. Impact. So version four then finally reached reached the top, yeah? and it's still a very 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 important part of the internet today. The internet protocol is not too far fetched. IP version four or IP IP v four it's called. Yeah? This IP v four. Internet protocol is working like this. Every node has its own address. Yeah? And IP44, IP44, V4 using 30D, 32D bit addresses. So we have two raised by the power 32 different. addresses. So roughly 4 billion. A little bit more than 4 billion. IP version 4 addresses are available. So we could address roughly above 4 billion nodes, 4 billion devices. 
in 1990s, in the 1990s, it was clear, this is not going to be enough. Yeah? World population is meanwhile 8 billion or something like this, so not even every person could have its own IP address. And if we think about us, we have a computer, we have a, a mobile phone, we have a lot of things. We are dealing with little little uh, controllers uh, which are Wi-Fi capable and so on. And every device has an IP address. We're running out of IP addresses. This was clear. So they started to develop a successor. And the successor IP version 5 was already used. This was a stream protocol, more experimental than anything else, never widespread. However, it was in use. So the next version was then chosen as IP version 6. Yeah? And this is using 128-bit addresses. So we have two raised by the power of 128 different addresses. A tremendous amount of addresses. A tremendous amount of addresses. So actually, this is more than an average person has atoms in his body. Much more. Just for comparison. Yeah? So we could address every atom in our body has its own IP address. <laughs> Maybe we are running out of IP addresses again. Yeah? But right now it seems to be an overwhelming amount of addresses. What the impact is and so on. There are more difference, differences than in an IP version 4 and 6. We will come to this. Now we'll talk about those versions more in detail. What is the same? So every node has an address. Every node can be addressed by this address and reached by this address. And IP is working in packets. So IP is working in packets. The size of the packets might vary. Yeah? So there's a maximum size also in the IP protocol we find. Uh, however, uh, depending on the sublayer, if we are running over Ethernet, for instance, then the maximum transfer unit, MTU it is called, uh, is 1500 bytes. Yeah? So in packets, so the size of the packets is not really defined. However, uh, if you have a bigger chunk, we are using more packets. Yeah? More data. More uh, packets which belong together. Yeah? And the thing in IP is now that every packet is rooted by itself. So there is not a connection or something like this. There is a packet. This packet has the destination address and it will be rooted by the routers in the network. So, okay, this belongs here, this belongs here, this belongs here, this belongs here. Yeah? Routers are allowed, if there's a congestion or something like this, to drop packages. But, okay, this, I don't know what to do with them. I will drop it. Yeah? Or use an alternative route. Ah, dear, we have a suggestion. I send it here. Yeah? So even if those packets would belong together, if it's a big chunk of data and I've, I've producing small packets out of this bug, big chunk of data, and then all packets may take different paths. Maybe we're missing some packages. Maybe we are not getting them in order because one path is faster, one path is, 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 is not that fast and so on. So they can be somehow. Yeah? So we have, this is called dynamic routing. Every packet. may take 
a different path to the destination. Packets might be dropped by node in case of overload. I'm too busy now. I will not process this packet. Oh, okay. So actually, this means. This means packets might arrive out of order only partly or even fragmented. This means it's also possible, you know. If I'm sending away a packet, then it will take its path through the network somehow. Yeah, the routers are deciding how this is transferred. They are. We'll talk about this how this is is working, and uh, if now a hop in between might not have this big size of of maximum transfer unit, the routers might even chop the the packets also. In smaller packets and fragmented even more, and also the small fragments might not arrive. It's a, it is not a safe transfer media. Yeah? It's considered not to be safe. This is also the this is also the, the premise of this. Yeah, that in the infrastructure, network infrastructure, anything can fail. This was the premise when developing this because this is actually the way. That the reason uh, why it's designed that way to have packets arrive even if there are somewhere nodes dropping or not failing or something like this or a link failing, then, then the packets will use another path. So actually, it's very, you know, reliable in a way that the, some packets will, will arrive so that the receiver knows, okay, somebody tries to send me something. Even in, in bad network infrastructures. However, that we have a big amount of data transferred correctly. Yeah? This has to be handled in upper layers. And now we have this case that this TCP IP stack, this belongs together. This was in history, this belongs together. So it was it was one part, so that one part, the, the TCP part, took care that all the data is transferred correctly, and the IP part was just for sending it through the network, yeah, as good as possible. And if you take this in combination, it's very reliable. Yeah. However, IP itself is <sighs> failsafe on one side because we have alternative routes. Yeah. However, it's not meant that every transmission is received correctly. So that's that's internet protocol. And in next video we are going to talk about we start with internet protocol version four because it's still very widely spread, uh, and we have issues with the addresses. I talked about this. Uh, we have a lack of addresses, and let me talk about some techniques how. This why it still works. Yeah? Usually it should be over already, but, but it still works. And then we will have later on we will have a look into Internet Protocol version 6. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.